praise you this morning, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for the witness, amen, that will come back to us, amen, in the moving and miraculous power that you're showing in people's lives. In Jesus' mighty name, praise God. Give the Lord a hand this morning. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Tim. Great, great job. Amen. And thank all of you for sharing. Amen. And, and uh, Mike and Suzanne is always doing a great job. Great selection of music this morning. Amen. I love that. Hallelujah. It's all good in Jesus, but I mean, sometimes there's just some that hit you a little bit stronger than others do, and I, I'm feeling that today. Praise God. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord for all that you guys do. It's a blessing. And Tim, you're just always right on top of the Holy Spirit leading you, and that's just such a blessing to all of us. Amen. The witness that we uh, experience in our own hearts and spirits, amen, uh, is just fantastic. And can't ask for more than that, amen, in the body of Christ. So praise God. Amen. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I almost uh, think, don't do this. But on the other hand, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Praise the Lord. And God's spirit is not easily quenched. Thank you, Lord. I mean, we used to hear that all the time in Pentecost, and you're, you're quenching the spirit. Well, I don't believe I've got any more power than God has. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to trust him to roll with the flow. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, the other day I was getting in my truck, and uh, a guy said, uh, can you give me a lift? And I said, sure. You look great. Chase your dreams. Go for it. And then I drove off. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Gave him a lift. All right, you show me somebody in denial, and I'll show you somebody in Egypt up to their ankles in water. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. You don't like the human side? Let's go to the animal world. What would bears be without bees? Ears. <laughs> Even my wife <laughs> suffers under this. She's got a really cool garden, though. She's a real garden fanatic, and this is the truth. And she has a chicken-proof garden, she said. It's impeccable. <laughs> it can only get better from here, right? Yep. It's my hope. Well, when Tim was uh, speaking, I turned into the Psalms, to the very first Psalms. And this is, uh, has to do with what I'm talking about today, but it really wasn't scriptures that I had pulled up. It just came to me as he was speaking. And it's, a lot of this is about who we're listening to. You know, that's the devil. That's, you know, this world is filled with two kinds of people. Only two kinds of people. Saved and unsaved. That's it. That's the only defining truth that we have. Amen. And here's what Psalms uh, 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now that's not, I mean, I used to think that meant, uh, you know, somebody wants you to go out and party with them, you know, and get high or whatever. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about people who don't know God making decisions for you. Yeah. Planting stuff in your head. Yeah. Amen. So blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, or the word of the Lord. And in his word does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Yep. We need to keep the focus in the right place. Yep. Not listening to the world, not listening to the the fear tactics and all the other stuff that's going on, but keep your mind focused, keep your meditation on the Word of God. Amen? Because there be many that say, this is uh, chapter 4, verse 6, there be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. So even when the world is you know, celebrating their uh, financial blessings and uh, whatever things they got going on. He says, he's going to put gladness in my heart that's going to be more than what they had when they thought they were reaping the great benefits of the world and so on and so forth. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, 
only make us me dwell in safety. Praise the Lord. That's the Lord's word. That's what God is saying about these situations. Amen. So let's go to 1 John now, chapter 4, and I'll read verses 4 through 6. 1 John chapter 4, 4 through 6. And welcome everybody uh, out there on Facebook, uh, via the internet. Uh, I, I haven't forgotten you. I just, uh, I, I, I'm kind of random in the way I think, if you haven't figured that out yet. Praise the Lord. But uh, God bless you all for being there. We appreciate you so much. You are a part of this family, and uh, we, we're grateful to have you with us this morning. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So you are God, little children, and have overcome them, have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Now, just think about all the voices that we're hearing. Amen? That, if it's not from God, it's just stuff. It's just junk. It's, it's, we're of God. And we have overcome them or their ideas or their plans or their focus, amen, because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. They're of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world. Why would we be surprised that they're preaching fear and anxiety and stress and, you know, all this kind of stuff? And, you know, Jody talked about hate. Hate, we've talked about this before. It comes from fear. That hatred's been there all along, but now fear moves in and the hatred gets revealed. It, it shows up because of the frustration and the inability to do anything about it. And so you get angry at somebody. You've got to take it out on somebody. So now all of a sudden we've got all kinds of issues that we didn't know even existed. But because of fear, they're brought to the, to the surface. Amen. They are the world. Therefore speak they of the world and the world hears them. They're listening to this. We are of God. He that knows God hears us. He that is not of God doesn't listen to us. Amen. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. That's how we know the difference between what's true and what isn't true. If it's from God, amen, it's the truth. I don't care what it is. If it's not from God, you can just mark it down. It's a lie. It's, it's temporary. Amen. It's not reality. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Romans chapter 10 now, verses 2 through 4. Thank you, Jesus. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. That third song was so spot on. Amen. And that's exactly what Paul is talking about here. They being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is that he is the end of the law for righteousness to everybody yes. that believes yes. praise the Lord we are all flawed yep. amen there isn't enough law for me to keep that would ever make me righteous I have to receive righteousness yep. through the blood of Jesus Christ because I'm still making mistakes I'm still failing I'm still screwing up amen but he has never screwed up. Hallelujah. And I have been declared righteous yes. simply because I believe in what he's done. Yes. Amen. And because of that, this world has no control over me. It has no power over me. You talk about, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't want to get into the, it's so easy to get off into conspiracies and everything else. Uh, but, you know, I told the electrician uh, that was here the other day working for the air conditioner, uh, it's not paranoia if you know they're out to get you, right? I mean, praise the Lord. By the way, I want to thank Andy Wyckoff and Wyckoff Industries. Uh, we had that issue a week ago with the air conditioning, and it was hot in here. I mean, it was like 85 by the time we got out of here. And uh, when I, I called Andy about it, and, and uh, he, he uh, well, actually, I, I talked to Sean, but uh, I said, you know, just have somebody come out and take a look at it. We know that there's an issue with the control out there. And so he, the, the fellow from Wyckoff came and took a look at it, and he said, my God. He said, I'm, I'm surprised the place didn't burn down. There wasn't anything wrong with the air conditioner. It was the breaker thing on the wall of the church that the air conditioner feeds through into the, well, I'm not an electrician, obviously, you've gathered that. But, so uh, Andy then did me a favor and referred an electrician to me because I didn't really know anybody that we could get. And so he, the, the electricians were out here Thursday, I guess it was. 
And he said the same thing when he opened it up. That inside of that box was completely black. It had completely burnt. It even burnt, it melted the uh, breaker, the, the thing that plugs in there. You know, you know what I'm talking about, but I don't. Anyway, he said, I, he said, I can't believe you didn't have a fire. It didn't even melt the siding. It was so hot, it burnt, it melted that thing inside that box, and they replaced it. Air conditioner kicked on immediately, and it was fine. Praise the Lord. So we, I'm telling you, God moves, and we don't know everything God's doing. I mean, we were sitting here in church. We could have had a fire. Or we could have came to church, and the building would have been on the ground. God does, uh, does this. This is not, it's not coincidence, and it's not good luck. It's the Lord. Amen. And I praise the Lord. have been all week thanking Him. Amen. For sparing this. Amen. And giving us people, amen, that we know that will help in situations like this. And I'm, I'm grateful. Amen. For all of that. Hallelujah. So, back to what we were talking about here. It's the authority. See, He that is in us is greater than He that is in the world. So it's the, the authority that's in our spirit that causes the devil to obey us. Yes. Amen. That's not me. Like Tim was saying, it's not, it's not my ability to do this. It's the spirit that's in me. He's the one that has authority over that enemy. And if I let that spirit lead me and guide me, he'll guide me into all truth. And the enemy will have to leave. The enemy will have to submit, amen, to the, to the greater spirit, amen, that is in me. Look at Galatians chapter 3. And verse 3. Praise the Lord. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Yes. So the legalism, which is adding our works to the already finished and perfect work of Jesus, was trying to attach itself to the church in Galatia. They had been delivered, but now they were being pulled back into it. Amen. Amen. And so Paul knew that legalism is a killer, and that eventually it drains the spiritual strength from a person, amen. It takes the joy from you, amen. And so he commands the Galatians in chapter 5 and verse 1. Praise the Lord. Galatians 5, 1. I kind of said that in a weird way, I guess, but what else is new? Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty... Wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Praise the Lord. So sometimes you get, we get into situations that we don't see the answers for. And we're not getting an immediate you know, uh, experience to, to, to validate our, the Word of God. And so then we start thinking. Because the minute, the minute that happens, the devil comes immediately and says, Well, you know, if you hadn't have done this, or if you hadn't have thought that, or if you hadn't have said this, or if you hadn't have done that stupid thing, right. it's all a lie. That's a lie of the devil. The Galatians were being tempted to go back under the Old Testament law after they had freely, and I emphasize freely, received Jesus Christ and the promise of the Holy Spirit. Wrong teaching was coaxing them back into the Old Testament rules and regulations, amen, that they had been delivered from. Look at Titus chapter 3 and verse 5. And see, this is kind of the way the world often looks at the church, too, and, and within the church. Sally and I had a conversation the other night. She was asking me questions about some things, and, and I said, well, the, one of the issues here, and we're talking about the return of the Lord. And I said, well, I think... I believe in the re a, a physical return of the Lord. I'm not saying that I don't believe that. But I'm saying I think there has to be a manifestation of the Lord here yeah. in his body before that can happen. Yeah. And that's what a lot of this stuff is about. The devil meant it for evil, but yeah. God's going to use it for good. Because go it's going to bring us to a place where we have to focus on God. To where yes. we, God is number one. Where yes. God is going to be the source and the answer for our situations and circumstances. And the world will have to see it. Yes. And even the nominal... Christians or, or the religious type Christians who just think it's about rituals and going through motions and so on and so forth. But it's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now if you know, if you really have it settled, if you can get that accomplished to where this has got anything to do with our being the, 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 we should be good people, right? I mean I'm just saying as humans we should be good people, but as Christians we should. But it doesn't have anything to do with our salvation or our position with God. 
That's so hard to get it into our hearts. We can think it rationally, but it's just so hard to get. When you do something really stupid, it's really hard to believe that God's opinion of you has not changed one right. bit. Right. Now, you may change everybody else's opinion, right. but not his. You can't. Right. He has, he's like Tim tells us regularly and rightfully so. That father, when that prodigal son came home, as far as that father was concerned, he may have gone away, but he was always the son. He was always his son, no matter what he was doing, no matter how screwed up it was. Doesn't mean he liked it, but it didn't change his value or the, the love that the father had for him. And that's something we have to settle for ourselves. So not by works of righteousness, which we've done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So they're being tempted to go back to this thing. Amen. Uh, under the Old Testament. And they received the Lord. And they had been blessed by this. And they were fine. Everything was going good. Right? So we can add absolutely nothing to what Jesus did at the cross. Nothing. It was a total, perfect, completed work. And in that finished work, Jesus purchased our complete and total deliverance from the power of the devil. Yes. And that does mean yes. sickness. That does mean disease. I'm not saying it doesn't still come because we know we deal with it. I'm just saying he yes. purchased our deliverance from it. Now it's just a question of us, amen, receiving yes. that and keeping it and holding on to it. Because, you know, your, your health and your mind, as Jody says, can fluctuate. Like, just like uh, Debbie and, and, and Rita said. Yep. Yeah, and, and Eric, we, that's because it happens to all of us. Yes. You get in under pressure, and the first thing the enemy does is come to steal the word. Yep. Try to make it about you yes. and not about Jesus. Right. Praise the Lord. So j let's look at this in John chapter 17 and verse 21. And I know I'll probably be all over the place here this morning, but uh, I can't help myself. Praise the Lord. John 17 and verse 21. He said, they that, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Now think about this for just a minute. This is part of what Sally and I were talking about. How, how could Jesus come back for a body that is out of joint? That's dysfunction. And his body is more than just us. It's more than just a particular denomination. Or belief system. If a person believes in Jesus Christ with all of their heart and have confessed him with their mouth, they are a child of God. They are a brother or a sister of ours. Amen. And he's saying, I want this to be, I want them to be one. I don't want them to be Methodist and Catholic and no. you know, Protestant this and something else, you know, what a Baptist and Pentecostal and Holiness Pentecost. I mean, just go down the list. There's thousands of these things. And they are just names. But his name is above every name. And it's our faith in him that makes us brothers and sisters in the Lord. And until the church can be, really come to this understanding and begin to love one another even with our different doctrines. But still love each other based on the one and, and true doctrine. The only really important doctrine and that is that Jesus Christ is Lord. And when that happens, we become one. And I believe that's when the Lord is coming back. He's coming back for a body, amen, that has made itself spotless amen now you say well that's just contradicting yourself isn't it no we've made ourselves spotless in him when we all can come together in agreement he's the only thing that we have in common he's the thing that separates us from the unsaved and that makes us one regardless of what little rituals we have that we want to hoops we jump through or whatever it might be we're one in him not in our denomination. We've, that's what we've done. We've made it about my denomination. We're the children of God. Yeah. You, I'm not so sure. Yeah. Well, who gave birth? Yeah. You or Jesus? Right. We think because somebody got born again in our church, then we were the ones that saved them. We didn't do anything other than give them an opportunity to reach out to God. Right. Wherever they were. Hey, I was, I was in, a, in a church of Christ when I first went to an altar and accepted Christ. It was, I was about 10, 10, 11 years old with a neighbor kid. The church that I went to, they, never, they didn't talk about salvation. It was just, you know, moral stuff. You just do the right things. It was, it was a, well, I won't say what it was, but nevertheless. 
good people, but they just didn't know a message. They didn't really didn't have the message. So I was a kid. Now, I didn't see any change. I didn't notice anything different. And uh, I don't know. I assume that because if I was honest, I, th I, I wouldn't have gone down there uh, to the altar if I didn't really mean it. So I believe I was born again then, but I didn't know it because I didn't have any teaching. I, didn't, I went back to the church that I'd always gone to, so I didn't know any more than I'd ever known before. And so I spent my whole life that way. But then, as an adult, when I was 30-something, I don't know, 35, I think, uh, we went to a Holiness Pentecostal church in, in uh, Texas. And uh, I was like Tim. Guy preached a great sermon. I don't know what it was about. I don't even remember what the sermon was about. I just remember they gave an altar call and I went mm -hmm. and raised my hands and began speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. And was born again. And there was a radical change then. Mm -hmm. Now, was I perfect after that? No. I mean, I still screwed up. Still do to this day. But I knew something had taken place. Something had happened yes. that was different than ever before. Amen? So, what I'm saying is, I could have been in a Baptist church. I could have been in a Methodist church. I could have been in a Catholic church because I've got Catholic relations, but cousins, uh, amen, aunts and uncles that are saved. They're born again. I mean, they believe in Jesus, but they're still Catholic. Does that make them unsaved because they didn't get saved where I got saved? No, if you believe in the Lord Jesus, you're born again. I don't care where you're going, what church you're going to, amen. And if you'll follow that, he'll lead you into all truth. Not just the truth about being born again, but all truth that results from that. Amen. Yeah. So all, they that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. So one of the reasons the world has a problem with Christianity is because we're always fighting about it. Yeah. So they're thinking, why do I need, I got plenty to fight about right now yeah. as a non-believer. So why join a church and just have something else to fight about? Yeah. Praise the Lord. So, here, here's what I'm saying. Legalism is also, I'm right and you're wrong. My doctrine separates me from you. And unless you adhere to my definition, you're not one with me. The New Testament law is one thing. To love one another. To love God and love one another. Not just your congregation... Not just your family, not just people that believe exactly the way you believe. But everybody who has accepted Christ. Amen? John 17, let's look at 22 through 26. Eric, can you hit that down button on that and drop the temperature a little bit? It's, I think I said it in 75. You have to open that door and it'll probably come off in your hand, but don't worry about it. Just pull it up. You hit the down arrow and just take it down to like 70 or something. It's just getting warm. Neither that or I'm having a hot flash. Praise the Lord. It's possible. I'm trying not to be sexist. I can, men can have hot flashes too, right? Okay. So, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Now, again, think of this in the context of the whole body, of everybody that believes, right? I and them, thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one. See, we can't be made perfect until we come together, until we are one. Now, I'm not saying we've got to go get everybody to convert to some other denomination. I'm just saying love them as they are. Yeah. If they're a believer, if they believe in Christ, then we need to be one with them. Yes. How, how else can we have the impact that God says we're supposed to have in this earth? If we're so busy fighting amongst ourselves, yep. people don't take it serious. So in them, I, thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father... The world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Jesus didn't stop loving people because they're 
doctrine was not quite up to par. No, he just loved them into the truth. Yeah. Amen. Believe on me as I believed on the Father, right? Amen. So that would be, this right here would be a manifestation of Jesus. Coming into full stature of Christ. What's the full stature of Christ? When everybody comes together. Because we can't be the full stature if we're all separated. Right? We could be an arm, we could be a leg, we could be this or we could be that, but we can't be the full stature unless everybody's in agreement about what it is we've received. Amen. Not a doctrine. Not some religious teaching. We've received Christ. Yes. God yes. has come to live within us. Yes. All of us. Yes. Believers in other denominations have the same God living in them. Yes. Why, why, why could we, how could we be so foolish as to hate them or not get along with them? We're, we're hating the very God that saved us. Right. This has to be about becoming one. Yep. Now, we're never going to agree on everything. My wife and I have been married over 40 years. We don't we agree hardly on anything other than what's for dinner usually. Praise the Lord, because she does most of the cooking. I mean, we disagree about a lot of stuff. Amen. Okay, I guess we're the only ones that have any marital issues, but okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you. I got an amen in the back. Glory to God. But I said, but I've said it, I said last week, I'll say it again though. If if we agree on everything, one of us is redundant. Yes. You know, I mean Seriously, yeah. we need that because sometimes I'm wrong, rarely, but oh, yeah. every once in a while I'll be wrong, and uh, she'll help me through it, right? And of course, she's wrong frequently, and I'll help her with that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. She's riding home with me, so this is going to be good. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Love one another, even when we disagree. Praise the Lord. When John the Revelator, the same John that's in the New Testament there, he wrote, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Now think about this. Jesus Christ himself is the day of the Lord, or the Lord's day. Amen? Right? He's our Sabbath, right? Yeah. He's our rest. Yep. He is the Lord's day. Praise God. Jesus. Look at Hebrews 9.28. And I'm saying this because a lot of people are fearful. Their life isn't oh, yes. perfect right now. And what if the Lord came back? Look, the Lord's going to come back. If you're born again, even if you're flawed, which all of you are, yes. just like me, because we still have this body that we're operating in, yeah. you're still going to go. Yeah. He's still coming for you. Just like the prodigal son came back. Was he perfect? No. He was trying to figure out some way to excuse his behavior or get forgiveness or get accepted at least. And the father says, look, it, that was already done. You were my child when you left. You're still my child when you were gone. and You're still my child now. Mm -hmm. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him, shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now think about this. Jesus never sinned. So he can't be talking about Jesus. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So how is he going to appear? I'm looking for his appearing in his temple. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16. Again, I'm not denying a rapture. I'm not denying the, the, the return of the Lord, the physical return of the Lord. But I'm saying there's something that has to take place in this spiritual body yes. before that happens. Yes. And it can't be that we just start another church somewhere. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with starting another church. But I mean, just start another denomination so we can create more confusion and chaos. And, and so I can get your people to come here because I can convince them they may not be saved where they're at. Yes. I hate to tell you this, but it happens it happens. Even in, even in very strict denominations, there are variations. And the reason for those variations are that I can get people to come here that otherwise would go there because I've got a little twist on this doctrine or I've got a little something here that would cause them to be fearful that where they're at may not be enough. Wow. When it's all about Jesus. Yes. And I'm not saying that's intentional because I don't know everybody else's mind. I just know that it happens all the time. So know ye not that you are the temple 
Where is he coming? He's going to come to his temple. It says he's going to appear. And that's not someplace over in Israel. Believe me, it's not. It's you. Yes. It's me. Yes. He's going to come to the temple of God. And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. You are the temple. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. And so because God has taken up residence in you, then all the earth, yes. carnality, flesh, and Satan have to keep quiet or have to shut the hell up. Amen. And God's enemies will be scattered. Yes. Amen. Yes. Look at Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 20. When we understand this, when we really operate as who we are, the whole world shuts up. Yes. All that are fighting and feuding and all that's going on right now. And some for good reason. I'm not saying there, there aren't motivations for this. I'm just saying there's a better way. And when we, the body comes together as one, amen, the Lord is in His holy temple. Yeah. When the Lord is really in His holy temple and we're aware of that, let all the earth shut up yes. before Him. Let all the raving, let all the anger, let all the frustration, let all the hatred yes. stop. stop. Yes. I'm, not talking, I'm not talking race here. I'm, I'm talking people. Yeah. I'm talking about the world that we live in. It's full of hatred. It's full of yes. anger. And this stuff, because of the fear that it generates, yes. has bringing it out. Yes. Because you get enough fear in somebody, and you're going to find they can get hateful in a hurry. Yes. They'll get vengeful. They'll get spiteful. Amen. Because they can't deal with it. Right. Somebody has to suffer for this. Yep. So the Lord's in His holy temple. When the Lord, and I know He's residing in this temple, yes. my spirit, let all the earth... Shut up. Just stop. Praise God. The Holy Spirit working in you is the one that produces Christ appearing. Yep. Amen. He became what I am so I could become what He is. Yes. Amen. Yep. The Son of God became the Son of Man so that the sons of men could become sons of God. Yep. Now what is that if it's not an appearing of Jesus Christ? Right? Yeah. Again, I'm not talking, I'm not saying there won't be a literal. I'm just saying before that can happen, there has to be a spiritual awakening yeah. to the point where people really begin to realize who they are in Christ and that we are one. Yes. We make up a body yes. in spite of our differences. Yes. Denominational, ethnic, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a word. Like, despite our in ethnicities, yeah. despite our denominations, despite our belief systems, there are only, I said before, there are only two people, two kinds of people on this earth. They're either saved or they're not saved. That's the only kind, that's the only kind of people there are as far as God's concerned. Yes. True. Praise God. Yep. Hebrew, Hebrews chapter 2, uh, verses 3 and 4. Praise the Lord. It's time, it's time to get mad, but let's get mad at the devil. Let's quit getting mad at each other. Let's quit being hateful towards one another. The devil's the one that needs to be dealt with. He's the one that is creating the problems. Amen. You either have God directing your steps or you have Satan directing your steps. Now, I know people don't like to hear that, but that's a, the that's a truth. It is. Tim says it multiple times here. Whose side are you on? Who's on the Lord's side? Yep. Well, you're either on the Lord's side or you're on the enemy's side. Because there is no place else to go. There isn't. No. So how should we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. Great salvation. But how great is this salvation if Satan's power still manipulates and controls us? How great is this salvation if we still have to fight our way out from under it, life, day after day? How great can a salvation be that doesn't completely and thoroughly deliver? Well, the good news is our salvation is a great salvation. Praise the Lord. Through the work of the cross and the resurrection, Jesus completely broke Satan's dominion and bondage over us. Yep. Then in our new birth, he, Jesus, released all of his creative powers in us. 
And we pass from the realm of death to the realm of life, or from unspiritual to spiritual. Spirit life we're talking about. 1 John chapter 3, uh, verses 14 through 24. I'm going to read extended here. 1 John 3, 14 through 24. God, our identity is so critical. Our awareness of that identity. If we knew how much God loves us individually, we would know he withholds nothing from us. Healing doesn't have to be begged for. Healing has to just be received and confessed and declared. Now, the enemy comes for the word. So you know if you're declaring the word, he's going to come and try to discourage you by trying to block that manifestation, amen, by giving you thoughts that you're not worthy or that you screwed up too much or you're too far gone or, you know, the doctors don't know. I mean, all of these things. We know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. Ooh, that hurts. How many of you know there's some brethren I don't... You know what I mean? I, I don't know if I love them. I'm not talking about the congregation. I'm talking about the brethren are yeah. the body of Christ. Yeah. But love is a decision. David said, I will love the Lord. He made a decision. I'm going to love God. I don't care what's happening to me. I don't care what, how, how I screw up. I don't care how I, you know, bad things may happen. But I will love the Lord. Yes. And God said, that's a man after my own heart. Yeah. That's a man who's chosen to love me. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death, or is as though they are not saved. Because that's what we're, life and death we're talking about here. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Hmm. And I thought Cain was bad. But see, God says, Jesus said the same thing in the Sermon on the Mount. He said, uh, you say uh, your enemies do something to you, you do it back. Eye for an eye. He said, I'm saying, if they do something spitefully to you, then bless them. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. He said, you say, thou shalt not kill. I say, if you hate, yep. you're a murderer. Yep. Now, we can get angry at stuff. But God help us not to get angry at people. We can, we can hate behaviors. We can hate actions. Right. But God help us to love right the people. We need that. That's what I have to have from God. I have to have it every day. How can I be judgmental of somebody else? I don't really know the situation they're going through. I'm asking for judgment when I do that. I have to say, hey, I don't get it. I don't like it. But I got to love these people. I got to love you. I got to love the person in my family who doesn't want to get along, that wants to just be hateful and spiteful, that just wants to fight, just wants to fuss, whatever. Whoso hated his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God. So this is how we know the love of God. Because he laid down his life for us. When we did not want him to. We didn't ask him to. We didn't care about him. We didn't know about him. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Now, I don't think God's asking us to go out and blow our brains out for somebody. I think what he's saying is this. You need to lay this thing down and let the Spirit of God direct yes. you. Let the Spirit of God yes. operate through you instead of your natural way of operating and thinking. Yes. Because believe me, we can get offended in a heartbeat. Doesn't take much. You know? But we gotta, we've got to we gotta die to that. Yes. Hereby we know that we are the truth and show our... Okay, so but whosoever hath this world's goods and sees his brother has need and shuts up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? It's like the joke I said this morning. Okay, guy asked me for a lift. I said, yeah, go for it. You're cool. You look good. See ya. No. If I, can help, if I have some means to help that person and I'm not willing to do it, that's not Jesus. He said if you've got a coat, if they ask you for a cloak, give them your coat. In other words, he said if, if they ask you for your uh, sweater, give them the sweater, but give them your overcoat too. Yeah. Because God's going to supply all of your needs. You're sowing seeds. Yes. Praise the Lord. So my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, that's easy, yeah. but in deed 
and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our hearts condemn us, and we know that they will, they do whenever we screw up, whenever we do anything, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. He knows the motives behind our stupid stuff. Because believe me, we don't do things for no reason. We may think it's just an act. It's just a random behavior. The truth is, there are deep-seated reasons for everything that we do, especially the negative things. And we don't maybe even know them ourselves. Something that happened as a kid, something that happened in a previous relationship. Who knows what? But God knows. And that's what he's looking at. Not what we did, but the reason why we did it. Not just out of spite or anger or hatred, but because of some deep hurt, because of some pain, some situation that we're not able to quite analyze. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God. And that's what grace is for. To bring us to a place where our hearts don't condemn us. And whatsoever we ask, we receive. How many, there were some things asked here this morning, right? Yes. I'm telling you, we receive it. Yes. We receive of Him because we keep His commandments. His commandments are one, two. The only commandments he, there are in the New Testament is to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. Because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is His commandment that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Now, the first one, I can do. Mm -hmm. Right? The second one's a little more difficult. <laughs> but I can only do the second one if I'm doing the first That's one. Right. That's right. Then He makes it possible. Yes, he Amen. And He that keepeth His commandments dwelleth in Him. Yeah. And He in Him. And hereby we know that He abideth in us by the Spirit which He has given us. Yeah. By the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. So our goal in life, and, and we heard it this morning. I've, I've said the same things myself. So this is not an indictment. This isn't a criticism uh, by any means. Because I go through the same thing y'all do. I mean, I, we're all, there's no difference in us. Right. I'm just the one talking right now. Yeah. Amen. And so, uh, otherwise we're identical. We're, we're just born again people. We're just believers in Christ, right? And so, in our new birth, what, what he's trying to tell us, our goal my goal in life isn't to fight for deliverance, but it's to freely accept deliverance that Jesus already made available to me. Amen? I'm not fighting for God's favor. I can't stop it. It's a free gift. I just have to learn how to receive it. You know, relationships fail. I'm not a psychiatrist. I did take a few psychology courses, amen, like uh, the criminally insane and some other things, just trying to identify. <laughs> but I am saying this. People that, uh, people that can't receive love can't give love. Amen. So if you've got hurts and pains and whatever it might be, that makes it difficult for you to, to believe in anybody else's love, yours is going to be shallow too. Just, just how it is. And that's why God's trying to get us to understand, I love you so much that you can afford to love others. You can afford to take a risk. You can afford to maybe get turned down or shut back or pushed off or whatever it is. Because I love you so much, that will never change. No matter how many people reject you, no matter how many times you fail in other ways, if you can understand how much I love you, it will be life-changing. Not only for you, but for everybody you have contact with. Praise the Lord. Hebrews 4 and 11. He says, enter into my, let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. Yes. So if we're going to work at something, let's work at learning how to receive his love so that we can then be a vessel or a means by which he can love others. Yes. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief which was Israel not coming into the promised land because they didn't believe that God would protect them, that God would take care of them and provide for them. Amen? That's learning to accept 
and rest in Jesus' finished redemptive work. And that's what faith is really about. If we have faith in that, we don't need to worry about faith for healing. We don't have to worry about faith for deliverance. We don't have to worry about faith for anything else because that is the faith that he's talking about. Once you believe that you are the redeemed, when you really have it settled, your expectations change. Amen? I mean, it's like if uh, my grandkids, for example, they, they expect me to do stuff for them. Right? And I, I'm glad that they do. I'm not saying they're selfish or greedy. I'm just saying they just, that's Popo. I mean, that's what he does. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and I like it. I like it that they have that confidence to know that they're not, they, they, they can aggravate me, but I'll never be mad at them. I'll never hate them. I'll never not love them. Right. Because they, they'll t try your patience. Amen. Just like I'm sure my Heavenly Father thinks, you little imp. What are you up to? You know, I love you. I love you. Why are you doing that? You know? What do you want? Here it is. Right? And, and that's the way it works. And, and mine is a, you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more? Your Heavenly Father wants to give you the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the means by which we receive everything from God. Yes. Amen. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest so we don't fail after the same example. Amen. For us to enjoy salvation and the benefits of salvation, it's healing, a sound mind, preservation, deliverance, prosperity. Mm -hmm. God supplied us with faith. Mm -hmm. Faith to believe. But he didn't stop there. He's given us his word. He's given us his Holy Spirit, to enlighten us, to make us aware of our inheritance. Praise the Lord. See, Satan's will is to try to wage war against us. The way he does that, I talked about it last week, is our minds. Amen? So he'll, he'll try every kind of demonic weapon he can to pull us back under his control, including religion. Praise God. The Holy Spirit works in us. Satan works in them, yes. the unbeliever. That's a fact. Amen? Ephesians 2, 2. Praise the Lord. Wherein in time past, he's talking to us, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, or those who are not saved. Yeah. Amen. Paul says, where in times past you walked according to the course of this world. I looked that word up. The phrase according to is from the Greek word kata, K-A-T-A. It means forceful or dominating. Amen. So we weren't just influenced by a course of this world. We were completely Kata, we were completely dominated or manipulated and controlled by it. The people that are not saved are not necessarily evil. They're just being controlled by a bad spirit. They're being controlled by something other than God. Right. Whether they're, they don't have to be cussing and drinking and doing dope and shooting each other. They're still lost. They're still being controlled by the enemy. Yep. There's only two ways to go here. Amen. And so we, we're not, we weren't just influenced, in other words. We, we were, uh, it wasn't just the course of the world that was making us make certain choices or whatever. Keta means we were completely dominated. We were completely manipulated. We were completely controlled by it. Yes. And that's the sadness and that's the, the sorrow of what we're seeing in the world. Not just in the, in the racial discord, but in the church, in, in life, in, in the world. Yeah. Period. How many good, you know, I, I was... I've been alive through I don't know how many wars. I just missed World War II. I, don't, I didn't miss it. I just wasn't there for it. But I was in Vietnam. I, I, I was alive during Korea. I was a young little kid, but I remember. And war after war after war, these things have been going on. Why? Because man is 
basically fallen. Yep. Outside of Christianity, he's doing what the devil wants him to do, and that's kill, kill, destroy, yep. ruin, wreck, yep. create fear, create panic. Yep. Steal, kill, destroy. So when Paul says, that, okay, I said uh, manipulated, controlled by, that, that, that course that we were talking about, he says, the course of this world. That is I, aiona, A-I-O-N-A. It's a Greek word. And it means a time period or a uh, spirit of time. The spirit that manipulates or controls a certain time period. Amen. So when Paul says we walked according to the course of this world, it conveys, it conveys the idea of being dominated by whatever the popular thinking is of our particular time and generation. And that's why we see the news and everybody, they're not giving us news. They're trying to brainwash us. They're trying to get you to believe a certain thing. To believe a certain way. To act a certain way. And I'm thinking, hey, I just want to know what the weather's going to be tomorrow. I don't need all this other crap. Amen? But you don't have a choice. If you listen, you're going to get it. So Paul's saying, when we were still lost, when we were still without God in this world, we had no eternal perspective whatsoever. It was just about me, 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 and right now, where I'm at. Amen? We had no perspective, no biblical standard to live by. And the result was we were dominated entirely by a constant changing philosophy and ideas that come and go. And we know if you've lived any length of time, you've seen this thing go on and on in weird ways and how it, one thing we believe is so true here and then 10 years later we find out that's a bunch of crap. They've come up with a new thing now and it's on and on and on and on. It never ends. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 2, 2 again. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The spirit that was working in you, now you're born again, it's no longer working in you, but it's working in everybody else that isn't born again. Yeah. So before salvation, we were short-sighted. We were temper-minded. We only thought about the immediate. Amen? We were dominated by manipulated by and mastered by the society, amen, and the day or the time that we lived in. How I many look at the 50s? Ducktails. Praise the Lord. The 60s. Oh, I, 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 I'm a child of the 60s, man. I mean, I was a teenager. I was, a, you know, up into my 20s in the late 60s. That's when I went to, uh, overseas. But before that, Man, I was a dope-smoking, dope-dropping... I, I did every drug you could get your hands on. That's how I ended up with hepatitis C, who God delivered me from. I was a child of that time. That time dictated my behavior, my dress, right? My attitudes. Hell, love, not war. This is how I didn't know which was which. Because that time... Dictated the behavior, the values. You see what I'm saying? That's what Paul's talking about. If you don't have God, your social existence is going to be determined by something else. By whatever the latest fad is. The newest drug, the newest this or the newest that, whatever it might be. Hallelujah. Paul tells us who's manipulating this lost world. Who's dominating and controlling lost men and women. We could say, well, it's, it's CNN. No, it's not CNN. It's people. People on CNN. Yep. Just like people on Fox or just like people on anything, anything else. It's people that are being manipulated by Satan. Yep. According to the prince of the power of the air. So that authority of the devil over, believe, over believers was eternally broken through Jesus' death and resurrection. And that's why we have a hard time fitting in with unbelievers. We can still love them, but it's hard to connect because our values are totally different. Now, it doesn't mean our behaviors are completely opposite because a lot of times we'll do stupid stuff just like they do. But our belief system is different. Our motivations are different. Amen. So the, the word air... Prince of the power of the air. That word air is A-E-R, Greek word, describing the lower or the denser regions of the earth's atmosphere. 
as opposed to the word aether, A-I-T-H-E-R, that describes high up air, pure air, air that's not contaminated by the earth or what goes on in the earth. Amen? It's like California smog, right? Get up high enough, there's no smog. But you get down on the ground and it's almost un unbreathable. That's where Satan operates, down in the lower atmospheres, in the impure. Amen? Praise the Lord. So what? So, so what's, that, what's that got to do with us? It's telling us Satan's power base isn't up there somewhere. Jesus already kicked his butt out of heaven. Amen? He's fell to earth. Amen? So his power base isn't up there or in the spirit realm, you could say. You don't have to go to outer space to find the devil's power base. Just open the door. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. He wants to own. He wants to control. He wants to dominate and manipulate man. And he wants to be the God of this world. He's the prince of the power of the air, but he wants to be the God of this world. Yeah. Now, we're in the world, yeah. but we're not of the world. Right. Praise the Lord. Galatians 4 and 7. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir yes. of, of God through Christ. Romans 8, 17. If children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So we are the redeemed. Now suffering, he's not talking about sickness and disease. He's talking about suffering in the world. The dealing with the fallen world. Mm -hmm. Amen? So, we are the redeemed. And if we're redeemed, we're not fighting for freedom from Satan's control over us. That's already been accomplished through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We are free. Yes. Yes. Doesn't mean the devil can't come and rattle stuff off in your head, but he can't do anything but that. He has to have you yes. to do it. He has to get you to cooperate. And he, it's easy to do with people that are unsaved because they have no other spirit to go by. It's more difficult for us, but he gets a bigger kick out of it if he can get us to be foolish and not trust God. Amen? Ephesians 2.6. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So he's got power in the lower atmospheres. In other words, in the earth realm. To manipulate and to control. Not us, but unbelievers. But he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He just told us we were heirs, joint heirs, one with Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we're not under Satan's power. We are over Satan's power. Yes. We have dominion over him. God has given us yes. dominion. If you, When you know what authority you have, the devil shakes. Yes. He's afraid. He flees from you yes. when you resist him. How do you resist him? With the word of God, with what God said and not what he's trying to get you to believe. Yes. Praise the Lord. Colossians 1.13. I'm just giving you a bunch of scriptures. I, we need to get this in us. Yeah. So that it's the first thing that comes to our mind when the enemy comes. The first thing we think about is what God said. Not what the devil's trying to tell us. Or not what the news is trying to tell us. Or not what the atmosphere around us is trying to tell us. Right. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Ephesians 1.21. Far above. All principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Yes. That's where we're at. Yes. So Satan has no right to control us. Our bodies, our families, our finances, amen, our, our minds. Right. We once belonged to him, but not now. We are no longer his to manipulate and to dominate unless we give in to it. Yeah. Romans 12, 2. Be not conformed to this world. See, we used to think that meant you got to dress really weird. That's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about fashion. Be not conformed to this world. In other words, don't let the 
the, the, the social stuff dominate your thinking. Don't let it be what guides you and directs you. Because mm -hmm. I, I promise you, there'll always be something to create division. Wherever Satan is, that's what he does. He doesn't care if it's black and white. He doesn't care if it's husband and wife. He doesn't care if it's uh, English and German. He doesn't care if it's American and, and Mexican. Uh, you know what I'm saying? He doesn't care. He just wants division. Because division, wherever there is strife, there is every evil work. Wherever he can get that started, everything evil can come up out of that. He grows. Amen? So be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's, let's, Ephesians 4, 23 and 24. I'm just, I don't want you to think, okay, this is just my opinion, or this is what I think. And, it, of course, it is, but I'm trying to give you enough Scripture to show you why it's my opinion. Mm -hmm. I just don't have to believe it because I happen to be the one talking. I'm saying, this is what God says. Mm -hmm. So be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you may put on the new man. See, the devil's trying to get us to submit to the natural way of thinking, yeah. to the anger, to the hatred, to the bigotry, to the bias, to the whatever it is. And that's why he says you've got to renew your mind to this. Yes. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind so that you can put on the new man. What's the new man? Jesus. Yes. I'm, talking, I'm still talking about a manifestation of Christ in the earth. Yes. Yep. Which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Yes. Colossians 3.10 Praise God. And have put on the new man. Renewed in the knowledge after the image of him that created him. Every time we pick this up, we have the opportunity to dress up. Yes. Dress up in Jesus. Yes. Amen? Yes. Put on the mind of Christ, he says. The renewing of our minds doesn't add to the completed work of Jesus. It simply puts us in a mental state that makes it possible for us to use our faith so that we can enjoy the benefits of salvation. Yes. Amen? It doesn't add anything to what Jesus has done. It just makes it more applicable, more, more usable, if you will. Amen? So we, so we can enjoy the benefits of salvation. Everything that Jesus provided for us. First John 4.4. 4. About done here. Praise the Lord. Ye are God, little children, and have overcome them. So whatever you're dealing with today, whatever you might be dealing with tomorrow, we're of God, children, and have overcome them. Yes. Because greater is he that's in you. Yes than he that's in the world. Yes. We have already overcome because Jesus overcame yes. it all 2,000 years ago and gave you that yes. gift. We, that's why we're more than overcomers. So the bottom line isn't how well we fight. Because we all fail. We all get fearful. We all back off sometimes and, and get confused. Amen? So the bottom line isn't how well we fight. What really counts is that we keep on fighting. Yes. See, the devil wants you just to quit. If he can get you frustrated enough and anxious enough and, and confused enough because you're not seeing the manifestation when you want... I mean, I know. we get Everybody does, goes through this. That's his plan. If he can push it back, if he can hold it back, if he can keep you from entering into that place where you can actually receive it, amen, he's got victory. He's got manipulative power over you, amen. And so we got... It's not how well you fight. It's how long you're willing to fight. I had a boxing instructor in the Marine Corps, and that's what he used to tell me, Nathan. It's not how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you get up. Yes. Now, you may not win the fight, but you will definitely get respect from that other fighter. Yes. We, I, I said that we, we need to gut punch the devil. It's time to start fighting. Yes. Not just, you know, well, eventually he'll leave me alone. No, he won't. Once he finds out you're a target and that you will not fight him the way you are capable of fighting, he's going to keep coming and he's going to keep putting it on you until you do something to stop him. He's like the bully on the playground. Yeah, 
He needs a good shot in the mouth to get him to back off. Yep. To learn that everybody's not going to be a victim. Right. Praise the Lord. The never give up attitude eventually always produces victory. Every time. If you won't quit, He will. Once He learns that you're not going to stop, He'll leave. He'll find some patsy. He'll find somebody that will let Him beat on them for a while. He doesn't like to fight. He just likes to beat up people. Praise the Lord. He that's in us is greater than he that's in the world. Praise the Lord. Yes. We are a people that are restored into Christ's likeness. The express image of our Creator. Imagine that. The sons of God, Scripture says, are without rebuke before a, quick, a crooked and perverse generation. How many of you can say that's the generation we're in? I think every generation would probably say the same thing. But we are the sons of God, and we are without rebuke or without correction. They, got, they can't judge us. Amen? We are without rebuke before a crooked and a perverse generation. And this is more than theology, folks. This is relationship. That's why we are without rebuke. Because we are in Christ. That's what the scripture says, who is it that condemns you? In other words, who has the right to condemn you besides God? Nobody. Because everybody's flawed. We, got, we know we have people that judge. Oh, that person, that's mad, that's stupid, they're ignorant, they're ugly, they're dumb, they're whatever they are. They have no right to judge anybody. The only one who has a right to judge is God, and He refuses to judge. He's given judgment over to Christ. The judgment that was due us came upon Christ. Yep. So there is no judgment. There is therefore now no condemnation yes. for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh. And he isn't saying who don't ever sin. No, he's saying who focus on the Spirit. Yes. You could say it's like Peter. who walked. Not, he started walking in the flesh, right? Because he started looking at everything else around him. And what happened? He sunk. Yep. But thank God Jesus was there. And even though he failed to keep the focus where it needed to be. Jesus didn't just drop him. Jesus didn't just turn his back on him. He hung on to him. Yeah. The curse has been reversed in Christ. Yes. And we are new creatures. Yes. We're not trying to overhaul ourselves. We are new creations. Yes. All things are yours. And you are Christ. Last scripture and we'll wrap up here. Romans chapter 10 Verses 2 through 4. Romans 10, 2 through 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to them, everyone that believeth. For I, bear record, I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. So that's so much us sometimes. Love God, but just aren't thinking. We're just letting everything out here determine our thoughts. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, that's ours. It's the righteousness of God that we have in Christ. And going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. It's done for us. It's over for us. It's all good for us. We need to make it good for others. We need to take what God has given us and start sharing. I learned something a long time ago. If you've got a, uh, an illness, a sickness, a pain, an issue, whatever it might be, the quickest way for healing is to pray for somebody else. I don't know why. I just know it works. I had hepatitis C. I prayed for an old guy in the Hy-Vee grocery store. He was standing over by the carts. Bent over, you could tell he was yellow. He was jaundiced. He had some kind of hep. And uh, probably like me, had been a drug user, you know, maybe still was, I don't know. But the Lord spoke to me and said, pray for that guy. Now, that's not something I normally do. Salutary. I will if God tells me to, but he has to be, speak pretty loud because I'm, I'm not real aggressive when it comes to that because I've had some weird situations over the years. But I knew it was the Lord and I went over and asked him if I could pray for him and he looked at me like I was from another planet. And then he said, sure. And I prayed for his healing. A 
about a week later, I, I had hepatitis C. I'd been going to the VA for nearly a year, and they, all they could do was just take more liver tests and see how far it had advanced and so forth. There, was, there wasn't any cure back then. That was before the stuff that they're selling now on TV. And uh, they called me up to the office. The, the doctor who had been over my case wouldn't talk to me, wouldn't see me. He sent me to a female doctor who had my records all stacked up on her desk. They were stacked that high, because it had been a year of going in there for uh, MRIs, x-rays, all kinds of blood tests and all sorts of stuff. And she said, well, Mr. Hamlin, if I didn't have all these records sitting in front of me today, I'd have to say you never had hepatitis C. No trace of it anywhere in my body. And I directly equate that to praying for that man at high V. I think God sometimes just wants us to put our money where our mouth is, put our actions where our beliefs are. Amen. He has something for every one of us. And he wants us to experience all the goodness that he has for us. But in order for that to really happen, we have to be willing to share it with somebody else. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Unless you can believe that you're loved, you can't love anybody else. That's, the, that's my motive here this morning. Just to understand how much God loves you. Yeah. You are perfect in his eyes. He's got your drawings on his refrigerator amen he's got your picture in his wallet whatever you however you want to define it he loves you with an everlasting love that you cannot destroy you can't do anything to make him stop loving you he's the perfect popo you know he's the perfect abba daddy he just can't stop help loving you and once we understand that it opens us up to be able to love others to understand their brokenness, to understand maybe what motivates their behaviors are not that different from our own. Amen? Maybe it comes out in a different way. But the reasons are the same. And the damage that it does is the same. People looking for love are getting angered and rebuked instead of a hug. The devil's trying to stop us from even hugging. I'm giving you all a yeah. Big felonious hug right now, praise the Lord. Illegal as it may be, but that's what, that's what God wants, and it's going to happen. You'll, we'll see it happen. And a lot of it will be the result of the church beginning to love themselves first, and then everybody else can experience it as well. Give the Lord a hand this morning, praise God. Amen, amen. God bless you. God loves you. It's a good day in the Lord. Amen. Have a great one. God bless you. Stay well. We'll see you back next week.